Well hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, today is going to be the second part and the final part of the uh, video series on water leaks on these cars. Now it's a bit of a myth that uh, the, the water that's causing your cars to rust is coming from the outside and a lot of you go out and spend an absolute fortune on under sealing your car when actually the water is coming from the inside and causing the rust. What you're actually doing by waterproofing it from the outside is making the problem worse because any water that may have drained out through certain holes or been allowed to evaporate is now stuck within the car and it will slowly eat through from the inside of the car to the outside. Now, as some of you may have noticed from the previous video done that I did on the uh, leaks in the trunk of the car, you would have noticed huge amounts of water forming down the inside edges um, of the rear wings and in the trunk. Um, and that's no different for the rest of the car. So if we look at, uh, first of all, from the inside of the car, I just want to give a quick demonstration on some of the places where water might be getting into your car and actually giving you a lot of problems. And those problems have been made worse by waterproofing your car. So we'll cut the video now, the cameraman will go around to the inside and we'll have a quick look from there. Okay, so looking on the forums, I see most of you have problems with rust around the backs of the seals and just underneath and in the trunk. Now we've already covered the trunk, but to find the problems in the seals, we need to look from inside. Those of you that have waterproofed from the outside have actually made the problem worse if you haven't solved the inside problem. Now, if you remove your interior panels, as covered in one of the previous videos, you may well be able to see little telltale signs as to where your water's getting into the car. And it's not from underneath. So first of all, if you look at all these bolts, if there's any corrosion around the bolts or any rust along the edges of the metal, or if you see any watermarks running down the paintwork on the inside, this is going to give you a clue to where your leaks are. Now, with the sail panels especially, over time these screws seem to work loose. Now, I haven't touched these at all, and yet I can undo these with my fingers quite easily. They're no longer done up tight, they've worked loose, and you can see corrosion behind them. In addition to this, on the other side of the sail panel, um, there should be some rubber washers, and over time those rubber washers have become uh, brittle and turned into a powder and fallen away and that's probably why there's now a gap here that allows these bolts to undo easily and water remember it will get into absolutely every tiny little crack the water runs behind the cell panel which is quite okay but it then reaches these little screw holes and starts pouring in through the screw holes then if we come down here, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but under here you can see all sorts of run marks where water has run down the inside wall. And this is a really, really common one. And what I'm going to do now is just pour some water down the body of the car and hopefully you'll be able to see where water's coming in. And of course today, it's not going to work. Okay, there we can see it, just there, water pouring in. Now this is a really common place for water to pour in when it rains. And it's an absolute disaster because if you've undersealed the bottom of your car and you've blocked the drain holes in any way at all, that water is just going to puddle in there and it'll stay there for months or years just slowly eating away at the bodywork of the car. And then a lot of you are welding in new panels without dealing with a problem and then of course in a year or two's time it'll be eating its way through again. So you'll have to cut it out again and weld it all up again. You're just wasting your time. You're chasing over, over and over again the same problem. So why not tackle that problem? It's going to take you hours to weld and respray, but it'll only take you half an hour to take out that panel and find your fault. Now, if we go to the outside of the car, 
you'll see where the problem lies. Okay, so from outside the car, you can see where water was traveling down here. It runs underneath the edge here, and then it accumulates around here. Now, because of that V there, it will literally pull its way into that point there. Ordinarily, this is covered by your side skirt, and you can't see where the problem lies. But if we remove this uh, vent here, you'll be able to see our problem. Our problem is almost entirely age-related. If we take this vent out, you can see over the years, water has pooled around here endlessly. And the cause of that is to do with this foam that runs around the outside. Over time, the foam has become really brittle and powdery, and it started getting washed away. And so water can then travel behind here and enter the car. It's really important that if you've got water issues, you take this out and reseal it either with a, a mastic or a foam, um, like the original foam, or some sort of rubber strip, or anything at all that's going to seal that from water getting in. If you're getting rusting inside your seals here, that's almost certainly where the water is getting in. And then if we come round inside the door here, you will see that the seal starts here. So anything on this side of the door is not protected against the rain. And if we come round here, we have another vent. Looks fairly uh, safe and okay, except the rain can run inside here by the gallon. And although the vents are designed to keep the water away, I can straight away see one issue. There's a screw worked its way out of here. There are only short screws that belong in here and they easily work their way loose over time. So just check your screws are in there first. And the second thing is pull this out. It will come out, I can assure you. And again, check all your foam around here. I'm just looking for any water uh, marks and yeah, you can see on the top here that water has puddled around there. For the same reason as on the side, the foam has become old and brittle. It's all breaking away and allowing water to run in there. And you don't actually need much water to give you a major, major problem. So replace your foam or use a mastic or a PU sealant, um, bitumous rubber, anything that's going to give you a really tight water seal around there. I'm going to take all of these problems uh, in hand when we put this car back together. I've also just noticed there should be a little screw plug there, up there, but it's missing as well. So that's another thing need replacing. It's really weird how time has given these cars so many problems, but if you look at each one individually, they're such tiny problems and just involve a little bit of maintenance. So now we move on to the door. Now, generally speaking, the doors are not a problem. They're incredibly well designed and incredibly well um, protected against the elements. They know that these are going to be exposed to the elements. There is no way of that giving a 100% seal along the edge. So the door itself is very well protected against water. But what they can't do is guarantee that the glass is never going to go out of alignment. Now, although it rarely gives rust issues, a window that doesn't fit correctly and seal correctly will allow water to work its way in, especially when you're going along. And that water runs down, it runs along here, and when it gets to the end, it gets soaked up by the door panel, which is actually made of a, um, a fibrous wood, compressed fibre wood and that starts to rot and then you find your door panel starts to distort and go out of shape. So that's another problem you need to take care of, the window alignment. That's going to be covered in an upcoming video which I'm doing very very soon because lots of people have asked for it but it is quite a complex video so I just want to make sure I get that absolutely right before I deliver it for you. 
Now I need my cameraman to go back round the other side for the next bit I want to talk about. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the glass itself. Now your windscreen and these other pieces of glass on the side are bonded in professionally. Usually they never ever leak and they'll outlast the car 10 times. The problem comes if you've got water somewhere in the car that has caused rust around where that seal is. And that's something that I can't actually show you because it's very, very rare in the first place. I certainly don't have a car with that problem. And also, if you have that problem, it's going to require a specialist to take the glass out for you and then rebond it. And at that point, you can find where that leak is. But there's one other thing on the interior that I want to talk about. And I had a, a viewer who uh, wrote in and mentioned to me that their carpet was getting wet by their feet. And could I show them where the leak was? Now, I always ask every single time, please, can you give me your name and country that you're from if you want me to do a video? In this particular case, the person did give me their name and I have to apologize because I couldn't remember their name and I can't seem to find it when I scan through today. So whoever you are, I do apologize. And to the rest of you, I'll keep on saying, if you want to request a video, please give me your name and country. So the person who's getting water down by their feet, it is highly unlikely that that water is coming in from outside. The most likely cause of that is from your heat exchanger. Now this part sits underneath the dashboard in the middle and it pumps or has pipes rather that pump hot water from the engine into here. It goes through a radiator which then blows the hot air into the car and then the excess water comes back and goes back to your engine for reheating. Now it's now becoming more common for these to leak. The actual connecting parts of the pipe are on the outside of the firewall, so they're less of a problem. But as you can see from this one, there is a join here, and it's becoming more common for that join to leak. And anywhere else where there's a join, it leaks. And finally, inside here, you'll see a radiator. That's also becoming more common for leaking. Now that leaking, you've only got yourself to blame because if you follow manufacturer's instructions, you're supposed to use distilled water or deionized water, which is pretty much the same thing, and a proper coolant or um, summer heat protection. And almost nobody bothers using the proper distilled water. You all think that tap water is good enough and tap water is the worst thing you can put in your car. I'm not going to cover the reasons why in this video because that's not what this video is about. That will be covered in a future video. But always, if you're replacing the water in your radiator or your engine, use distilled water. So the person who wrote in about getting wet feet, this is almost certainly where you're going to need to look. It's highly unlikely that water that is getting the carpet wet at the front, unless you've got serious rust issues, it's highly unlikely that that is coming from the rain outside. There's just one final thing I need to talk to you about to finish off this video. We're back on the outside for this next bit. Now, if you have one of these cars that doesn't have the mud flaps fitted, then in the place of the mud flaps where they would normally screw in, you're going to have a rubber bush under here. I don't know if the camera is able to get in there, but there's a rubber bush just here that holds this plastic panel to the metal bodywork of the car. And it's not uncommon for that rubber bush to come out. Now, if that rubber bush has worked its way out, then there's gonna be a hole through into the bodywork of the car. And huge volumes of water is gonna be forced through that hole when your wheels go round in the rain. And it's all gonna puddle in the seals of the car. So make sure that those rubber bushes are in place. Um, if you've lost them, which is not uncommon, I've certainly lost a few, then you'll just need to get some new ones. And I would suggest that between the plastic and the bodywork, you put some bitumous rubber or uh, some sort of other sealant and then put your rubber bush back in again with some sealant. And then that way it will both create a seal between the plastic and the bodywork and between the rubber bung and the bodywork. 
Now that pretty much concludes all of the water leaks but there's just one other thing I want to show you on the black car again before we finish this one. Okay so the heater matrix that we just talked about that goes in here the water is fed in via these two hoses one is in one is out now this is a non-turbo car so it's quite easy to show you where these hoses are but it's exactly the same place on a turbo car just much more hidden by a whole pile of electronics and mechanics that are sitting around here but that's where you need to be looking to disconnect your heater matrix from the outside now the final thing i wanted to show you was this gully here now although there's no known certainly not by me leaks into the car from this point I wanted to show you inside here because there is one thing you need to take care of on a regular basis especially if you live near any trees these panels here come out quite easily you'll see there's just some little clips here that you push in with a screwdriver and lift that out and if my cameraman can either from that side or come round to this side You will see inside this gully loads and loads of muck has built up and what that allows to happen is that becomes soggy and it holds the water for a long time and that then allows the metal to stay wet and slowly corrode. Now I've never actually known it to fully corrode through the bodywork, however this is general maintenance and if you want your car to last a long while it's really important that you clean these things out it only takes 15 minutes and it can save you thousands if not a complete write-off of the car if that was to go rusty and rot through to the inside now as it stands I've had a good look inside here and this is quite well designed it is nothing but a water trough that holds some uh, some linkage for the window wipers and then the water is allowed to run to one end it comes out under here and runs down to the floor so generally speaking you shouldn't have a problem there but just clean out that muck just to make sure no water stays sitting there and puddling and causes you a rust problem so for now that's pretty much all the leaks i know about on this car that i've come across over the last 20 years um, and hopefully of all the ones that i've shown you a little bit of maintenance will take care of all of those problems and save you any problems in the future for now that's the end of this video um, thanks for watching for those of you that subscribe thanks for subscribing and once you've subscribed click on the bell for all the future updates don't forget to keep an eye at the bottom of the screen for the address of my new forum which complements this channel um, maybe you'd like to join or at least have a look at that and see what other people are suggesting but for now that's it i'll catch you on the next video